Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's production of MongoDB Days. We're here at the Marriott Marquis in the Big Apple. Uh, now the world is not ending, despite the fact that the market's getting, the, the economy's getting better, even though the market tanked the last two days. Looks like things are stabilizing a little bit, we'll see. Still early, it's only uh, 12.50. But, uh, but we're here, we're covering MongoDB Days wall to wall. Eugene Vorkin is here. He is a coding architect at WebMD, a practitioner of, of MongoDB. Eugene, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Appreciate you taking your time out. Uh, we're talking to a lot of practitioners today. Um, we all know WebMD, right? Anytime we have a, you know, something wrong with us, we go to WebMD, we can't get off the site because we think we're going to die tomorrow, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, nice. it's, it's a great resource though. It's awesome how much information is in there. It's really changed, the right? You used to have to wait weeks to actually get any kind of insight. Now, individual, you've really empowered individuals to take action on their own, um, and so thank you for that. Um, but talk a lot, little bit about your role at WebMD, and then we'll get into it. Yeah, my role is architecture and application. So currently I'm working on uh, applications that use MongoDB, and uh, to, we also work on personalization. So uh, we're tracking data. Uh, click stream uh, data and do real time uh, decision what's advertisement should you people see, what's contents will be most relevant. So yeah, so um, I, I want to come back and, and ask you more about that, that, that individualization, that personalization. Uh, before we do that, talk a little bit about when you could take us back to when you brought MongoDB in. What was what was the environment like before, and what were you trying to accomplish? What was the driver to bring MongoDB in? Yeah, traditionally people use uh, Oracle uh, or any SQL databases. Why we choose MongoDB? Because of its scalability and performance characteristics, especially sharding, so we now we can grow as more data we catch, as more velocity of data increase, we can get it covered by using MongoDB. Explain what you mean by sharding. A lot of people you know, use that term, and many, many may not know what, what you mean. Uh, traditionally, scalability in a database, it's vertical scalability. You just purchase bigger and bigger machine. Scale up. Scale up. But at some point, it's become very expensive or impossible to, to find a service that support or you need. What's uh, MongoDB and all NoSQL, uh, some of NoSQL server provides, it's horizontal scalability. As you grow, you just purchase commodity server and add it to your cluster of machines. So you grow horizontally, almost indefinitely. Yeah, now the challenge, of course, of that becomes you know, managing and, and balancing. Yeah, and, yeah. and can you talk about how the industry uh, generally and how you specifically solve that balancing problem? Uh, the good thing, we don't have, as application architect working for enterprises, we don't have to solve this problem. It's solved by vendor. So for example, MongoDB, they have the solution with Mongo S and uh, all this configuration. So it's come with product. So, so 10 Gen has taken right. care of that. And that's right. the value that 10 Gen adds right. on top of MongoDB. MongoDB, it's open source, and the 10 Gen comes in and says, okay, we can make this even better, and, and that, that's how they right. make money. It's they provide a service into, around that. Right. It's built into product, so you don't have to, you have to know how it works, but you don't design the things. Because before, in order to do sharding, you do it on, on inside your own application and take all this complexity, uh, uh, you do it yourself. Yeah, right. of. Now, vendor does it for you. So that had to be one of the drivers, too, of bringing in MongoDB, was just the, or it's the allure of its simplicity. Is that, is that, is that right. fair? All right, it's, um, very, it's very developer friendly. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier to code against MongoDB than, say, uh, relational databases. Okay, so I want to come back to that, too. Um, but but take again. I, say, I was asking you to take us back. So it, it sounds like you were an Oracle shop, and maybe still are. Yes. Okay, yes. so right. So you were using Oracle for a lot of the back end on WebMD, and then what? You had all this influx of, of new types of data, massive you know right. increase in data volumes. A lot of it's most of it's unstructured. So you're looking for Correct. you know a, a, a platform that had greater affinity to that type of data. Is that yeah. right? Is, uh, that's absolutely correct. We have unstructured data, for example, events, when user clicks something, when uh, like, on like on Facebook, Twitter, we capture all this event, it's mostly unstructured, and we want to do some use of that. But it's like big data. We get a lot of data, and sometimes we don't even know what to do with that at this point. 
but next week we come with new ideas how to utilize that data. So that's why unstructured data, that uh, storage that can take unstructured data in a big volume is very, uh, very valuable. So you, you, you're, you're keeping the data, you're not throwing right, it away. Right, right, <laughs> right. With no throwing, no deletes, no updates, just inserting and keeping. So how did it work? So you took, you have SQL and then you bring in the, the, the NoSQL via MongoDB? Uh, is, and it's uh. depends. Uh, it's, uh, for example, for analytical purpose, and we have investment, company made investment in Vertica database, which is SQL, SQL kind of database and data warehouse. So uh, for that purposes, we move data from Mongo into uh, data warehouse because for reporting and other purposes, it's and plus existing investment, it's much easier to work with uh, structured database like Oracle. Or okay, and then so, it's, so you got so you got SQL, you got you got Mongo, and you also you got Storm, right? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's more like uh, uh, real-time engine to move data around to do real-time computation. Storm uh, is uh, similar to Hadoop, but for real-time. Uh, Real right, time and that ties back to the decisions you're making about serving up ads and, and, and individualizing ads, which you want to come back to, but Jeff, you want to jump in here. Yeah, so I wonder if we could tie all that together and talk about some of the applications you've built and uh, how you know do the, how they interact between Storm, uh, Mongo, and then the SQL technology. How, to kind of paint us a picture of uh, the applications you're, you, that you've built on top of those systems and kind of how those three interact. Um, and I imagine there's a mobile angle here as well. Uh, but it, why don't we dig into one or two of the applications you built and uh, that you're kind of uh, yeah, proud of. Yeah, uh, right now we have two applications in process. One is, uh, we call it a communication platform. Basically it's serving ad based on real-time user events, mm -hmm. events that user generates. And that's utilize the rule engine, so marketing people can specify on which rule based on uh, marketing scenarios uh, they have to uh, execute in real time. And based on execution of this rule, marketing campaign get assigned to particular users. So <laughs> that, and to, s to make it fast, we use MongoDB because of its excellent uh, scalability and query uh, support. Mm -hmm. MongoDB very good it's with indexes and other queries. And, uh, and uh, for analytics purposes, so let's say now we got all that stuff working and uh, business BI people, they want to do analytics to for customers, for internal customers. Mm -hmm. And that's where Storm comes in, so we can um, on the fly and almost in real time transfer data from MongoDB into Vertica. Vertica is uh, our analytical database. Uh, okay. But it's similar to like data warehousing. Tool. Right. Yeah, we're actually we're, we're very familiar with Vertica and those guys over there uh, and the work they're doing uh, based out in Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts, where right. we're, we're at. Uh, so that's a really interesting environment. So you're really serving up the uh, the capabilities via the the ads uh, to the end user again via Storm and or Storm is kind of it sounds like really making those making those. Uh, enabling you to make those decisions in real time kind of as the data streams right, in, right. Mongo helps serve those up, and then you move the data into, some, into uh, the vertical environment where you're doing more analytics to understand how those ads are, right, uh, how right. effective they are, exactly. things like that. Okay, very interesting. So, um, from uh, you know, from your infrastructure perspective, what has been the impact of bringing in co uh, technology, you know, open source technology like Mongo, like Storm, um, it, at, at WebMD, is that a, do you kind of embrace all those technologies? Was there a, a, you know, thinking about it ahead of time, like m might be a little bit reluctant because of the open source nature? What, what, what was the impact on your, kind of your infrastructure and your processes of bringing in this technology uh, when you've got, you know, obviously the traditional, everyone knows uh, the Oracle uh, world, and those two worlds kind of colliding a little bit? Oh, well, I don't think they're colliding, they can coexist. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, put some pressure on uh, bringing that technology in-house. So people have to learn and uh, or how to operate them. But if business requires and there is no other way of doing that, mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing. And uh, as a company, we're trying to embrace more and more open source technologies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, another thing you mentioned earlier was, uh, and we've heard this from other developers, is that you know, MongoDB is very developer friendly. Um, so we hear that a lot, but can you put some color around that? What, what does that really mean? Translate that. Is it? Um, uh, well, I'll just let you answer. What, what does that mean? What, are there the tools just simply uh, more user-friendly, more intuitive? Uh, uh, explain that to uh, us. 
In general, it's less code. If you look at traditional how we build application with, mm -hmm. let's say, a relational database, and we build it on object-oriented uh, with object-oriented languages, this so-called impedance mismatch. Object, it's hard to translate to relational database. It's like one-to-many relation represent parent-child uh, relational an object. So framework like Hadoop, uh, Hadoop like Hibernate in Java world, there's trying to fill that gap. Mm -hmm. But still, it's a massive uh, knowledge to, to use that framework. It's, uh, it's a big chunk of work need to be done inside mm -hmm. application to transfer this. With Mongo, they store, they store document as object, natively, as BSON object. So developer don't have to use it, hibernate this transformation from object-oriented language into what storage requires. So okay. whatever you have object, you save it as it is, which simplifies, it's like removing the whole la layer of complexity. Mm -hmm. That's why it's friendly. So, but, any, but even among NoSQL technologies, Mongo has this reputation of being uh, a very developer-friendly. Is there a, a, kind of put Mongo into context of some of the other NoSQL databases out there, and, and why you guys went with uh, Mongo specifically? Uh, because uh, for people who come, uh, it's dependent, of course, on user case. Mm -hmm. And uh, document structure of MongoDB fit well with like object-oriented world, especially for people who coming from a relational world. Mm -hmm. So it fit very nicely, and it has very rich query capabilities. For example, Redis, for example, it's key value store, but it's hard to search to index on some specific values that sitting in, inside your like values, but not in a key. Mm -hmm. With Mongo, it's possible. It has a very rich data structure and indexable and searchable. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we could talk a little bit more about um, mobile and how that's changing you know, your world as a developer. And, and I mean, many, many more people must be obviously using mobile. We just heard Jerry Cuomo from IBM talking about how they think about mobile first now. Uh, we were at O'Reilly Velocity this week and one of our guests said, eh, in two years you're not even talking about mobile. It's just going to be. Uh, I wonder if you could you know, share your thoughts on, on on mobile and how it's affecting the developer angle and where you see it all going. I I see. Yeah, I completely agree that mobile mobile first and uh, more and more traffic come from mobile devices, especially in our area. I'm working for professional services inside WebMD. We have pro, uh, website Medscape, where doctors and nurses use, and of course for them using mobile devices is very important. So we're releasing a lot of uh, mobile application currently. How and, uh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, and I think that's, that's more and more traffic we will see from so mobile applications. So one of the things uh, that we heard from the developer community at O'Reilly's Velocity was the challenges that, that mobile brings. It, 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 it adds complexity. Um, the user experience is, is harder to make perform. Uh, it's harder to diagnose where the problems are. Uh, much of the code gets distributed. It's you know, sometimes harder to keep updated. I wonder if you could share your, your perspectives on some of those challenges and how you're you're addressing them. Oh well, I think it's um, we're addressing is we try to to do as much testing as we can. We try to use uh, continuous integration, the latest uh, like build build and auto build automation techniques. So to make sure we automate uh, code, and uh, that automate our delivery process mm. and testing. So I think uh, to deliver um, quality application, testing is a key. And in mobile, it's challenge much more because you have to test for different operating system version, different devices. So automation for testing that's that's what affect. Uh, uh, we have to spend a lot of time on doing that. So talk a little bit more about that testing. How do you know what to test? What do you test? How does the user play into that testing? You know, are the tools robust enough for you as a developer? I wonder if we could just wrap on that a little bit. Well, tools become better and better, so we keep an eye on it and uh, uh, rely on tools, of course. And there's a lot of those tools open source. Some tools we purchasing. And uh, also, there's a lot of manual testing because uh, sometimes you just have to to make sure something like you didn't consider, but human can do this type of test. So, 
How about testing as a service? Is that something that you see coming? Or? Yes, yes, I see some, uh, especially in performance space. Uh, testing as service uh, in a cloud, it's very, I think it's very efficient. So I think, I, I think of an application as a software machine, and it's got all these components. Um, and when you're doing things like testing, you know, it's one of those components could, could fail, could break. Right. And then there's relationships with other components. Um, is that a valid, first of all, is that a valid um, metaphor? Uh, and how do you think about risk of failure in that type of system? Yeah, it's, it's valid. You just have to make sure you, first of all, there should be no single point of failure. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to test from different angles. So how do you deal with that no single point of failure? You put in redundancies, right. but redundancies add complexity and increase the chance of failure. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, but you, so know, you have a tough job in that uh, sense. Right? Yeah, I mean, things are moving so fast, and we talk about mobile, so. Right, it's, it's correct. It's, it's a challenging <laughs> job, and I, I enjoy it. Yeah. It's a you like the hard problems. <laughs> right, you have to solve problem every day. It's like a you know, game playing, but uh, it's, it's good. So. Yeah, you have you add complexity definitely, but you get redundancy because end goal is to serve your customers, mm -hmm. and uh, they have to be like system has to be online. Eugene, what do you th what, can, what can Ten Gen do to make your life easier? What's on their to do list from your standpoint as a customer? I think they do a great job. I like how they build community in New York City. They with meetups, they promote not pro not product, but they promote knowledge and uh, they're very consistent in that. And I see it's uh, uh, MongoDB as a, uh, as a database, very popular in New York City, and I think their effort pays off mm. because they care about developers, they care about community. What's the one thing they could do to make your life better? Now's your chance. <laughs> 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 I don't know. No? You're uh, happy. I think, yeah. Yeah, they're doing I'm what they need to what they need right, to do yeah. for for you to get your job done. Yes, they're very responsive. If there is a problem, I can get engineer at Tangen. They have event like today, which helps a lot, and uh, and they in a city, so they have office hours, which is cool. You can just pop up an office and ask somebody, and we did really? a couple times on occasion. Really, and, and they're available. Have, yes, they yes. just walk and uh, help us out. Awesome. All right, Eugene, Vorkin, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and, and sharing your insights with us. Good luck with uh, uh, thank you. your chat, your hard problems. Thank <laughs> you very much. All right, Jeff Kelly and I will be back right after this word. This is theCUBE. Thank you.